Okay, this is part two um, of unit overview. And I just want to go back to this because I botched it up so badly. Um, so here, here comes a uh, charge. It's a negative charge. So the first thing that's going to happen, let's see if I'm going to put my thumb in that direction. Yeah, the first force it's going to feel is going to be into the page. And then so it's going to start to go down into the page. So it will be pushed this way. So it's going to come in and loop around. I'm having a hard time drawing 3Ds, but it's going to... It's going to do a loop, make these circles this way, but the two meters per second is going to carry it down the way. And so it's just going to spiral, it's just going to do a, a, a corkscrew in the X direction. Okay, um, next one. Okay, it, here's an electron moving through a field. Um, now this, this is charged, and so... Um, could you tell me if I want um, there to be a possibility for this, this charge is going to get deflected by this field. There's going to be a field here. Could you tell me which way the magnetic field should go in order for this thing to, to have a chance of getting through unhindered? If I'd like this to go straight through, what, what direction should the magnetic field go in? Okay, go ahead and pause and see if you can get it. Okay, well, the electric field is this way. That shows you the direction a positive charge would get pushed. But um, an electron is going to always go opposite the field, so the electron is going to get pushed that way. If, if all there is is just this electric field, the electron is going to curve downward in a, in a par parabola. It's, it's like projectile motion. But... Um, in order for that to not happen, then I'd like, uh, I'm going to take my left hand because it's an electron. I have to put my thumb in this direction, and I'd like it to be buoyed up. I'd like the fee the force to actually negate this force. So if the electric force is down, that's the direction of the electric force, I'd like the magnetic force to be up. Now, in order for the magnetic force to be up, I need, do you see how I need, see which way my fingers are pointing? For my palm to point that way, my fingers got to point up. And so this is the direction of the magnetic field. It's out of the page. Okay, could you tell me how strong that field should be? If I know this, if I know the electric field here is E, and I know this is V, could you tell me how strong the magnetic field should be? What should B be in terms of E and V? Okay, well, I'd like the magnetic force to balance out the electric force. So the magnetic force is Q, V, cross B. And the electric force is Q times E. Now I'm just talking magnitude of these. So um, because they should be in opposite direction. So I should really put absolute values around these guys. Okay, do you see that the V is always perpendicular to B? The velocity is going to be perpendicular to B. B is up and V is that way, so it's perpendicular. So this just turns into QVB, and this this is just QE. So we can cancel out a Q, and if I solve for V, it looks like it's going to be the magnitude of E over the magnitude of B. It's just the two magnitudes of E and B over one another. Apparently that gives us meters per second. Okay, um, next one. If I Here's an electron. It's zipping... It's zipping this way, and I'd like it to bend when it goes into this magnetic field. I'd like it to bend and go around a circle like that. So which way should the magnetic field be? What direction should the magnetic field be? Okay, you take your left hand. You'd like it to be pushed coming in here. You'd like it to have a force downward, a magnetic force downward. And so that you get that using my left hand if the field's in. And so... X's get this thing to go in. So if the magnetic field's in, it will zip around. See, it first gets pushed this way. Then right here, it gets pushed that way. Then right here, it gets pushed that way, and so on. Okay, last question for this page. Could you tell me how much work the magnetic field does in going around this path if this distance from the center is R? And the, and the magnetic field is B, and that's Q, Q, V, oh, and, this is, and it's going with the speed V. 
How much work does this does the magnetic force do on this charge as it whips around there? Okay, so um, we're back. Let's see. Um, it does no work. It doesn't do any work because see how the force is this way? That's F and the DRs are, excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. The force is this way and the, and the, this should be a small DR is that way. Let me redraw that. Let me have a second chance. The force is this way and the DR is that way. So those are perpendicular. So when you do, you know, work is the sum of F dot DRs. And the dot product, you take the part of F that's in the direction of DR and multiply it by DR. Well, how much of F is in the direction of DR? And the answer is none of it. It doesn't do work at all. Okay, next one. All right, so could you tell me um, how fast is this charge going to be going when it hits the other plate? Um, we know that, let's say that what's known is the mass of this electron, we'll call it an electron. And the mat, we'll know the mass of an electron, put it in terms of m sub e, e is the charge on an electron, and uh, the electric field will be um, e. So could you tell me how fast it's going to be going when it gets over to this other side? Okay, well you can do this with um, kinematics, or you can do it with e equals e prime. The reason you can use your kinematics equations is because the field is uniform in here. So the electric, the um, the if the force, the net force on this is it doesn't change. It's constant over this entire path. Then you can go ahead and use those kinematics equations because they they're used for constant acceleration. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go the easier route. The energy um, before equals the energy after. So the energy here is um, v times q, where v is the voltage the potential difference between the plates. So it's V times Q is equal to, when it gets to here, all that energy is turned into one half MV squared. Okay, but I don't know V. Oh gosh, sorry, you probably were confused in that one. You need to know D, I guess. Sorry about that. So to get, yes, you do need to know D. Okay, so um, so the voltage is equal to um, ed. So that's what the voltage is times E is equal to one half mv squared. So I can um, maybe multiply both sides by two and divide by m. So V is equal to um, two times the electric field times D times the charge in an electron over the mass of the electron square root it. Uh, just real quickly, the reason why voltage equals ed is because voltage is really the path integral of E dot dr, but do you see how E and dr are in the same direction? E is this way. That's E, and if I do a path integral from say here to there, then they're in the same direction. And since E is uniform for every point along the way, you can pull that out, and then you just add up your DRs. So when you do that, you get ed. Okay. Um, I think, should we try this? No, I think we'll, we'll wait to the next one to do this, this side. Sorry about do, get, forgetting to tell you about D. I hope you didn't spend too long on it. All right. You're probably chuckling to yourself right now. Okay, I'll talk to you. Bye.